In today's video, just a little bit more of a simpler video, a little bit more of a simpler illustration. I uh, just wanted to basically just have a little bit of a chat about something um, that is on my mind. It's been on my mind for oh, all my life, but anyway. I wanted to talk about how, um, how I'm coping as an older millennial Gen Y person in today's society now my voice probably sounds a little bit different maybe i'm not too sure it sounds different to me as i'm talking um i ended up getting a cold and i actually lost my voice there for a little bit um so yeah, it was kind of uh shit. definitely wasn't it wasn't covid trust me covid actually was nicer to me than a standard head cold um i suffer so bad with head colds it's ridiculous <laughs> i just feel like shit. So yeah, bear with me a little bit. So if you have any sort of uh, generation um, things going on in your life that you sort of sort of sit back and um, just go, oh my God, just let me know down in, in the comments below. Maybe you might relate to what I'm about to say, um, but this is just my opinion only. Um, it's I'm not putting everyone in the same basket it's only my observations just my experience being out and about for all of my life this that's all it is i'm not having a dig at anybody actually i kind of am <laughs> but anyway <laughs> i try not to judge because i'm a little messed up myself this is just how i am feeling and the observations that i have made being an elder millennial in 2022 so I'm on the cusp of Gen X and Gen Y, but I still qualify as an elder millennial. Um, elder millennials, or the geriatric millennials, as they like to call us, are, um, you know, we're born around 81 to 85. Now, I was born in 84. Now, the millennials, the just the normal millennials, are from 85 to 91. We are young enough to be very techy still, but we are old enough to know the old ways of living. I have old Gen X, baby boomer, and millennial views. Like, I'm like the all-rounder. I can see from all points of view, uh, but with the views that I do have, I am pretty strong on those views, and you sort of can't change my mind. I'm pretty stubborn, so my views are my views, and... I, nothing can sort of take that away from me. <laughs> now we were the first generation that grew up with the first lot of technology and internet, but a lot of us spent our younger years with no technology, no computers, no phones. We were just outside running around having a great time. As for growing up in the 90s, um, everything was, well, it was basically normal. Like I, I found it just everyday living normal life, but what the uh, generations that are here now, it's the Gen Z, I'm pretty sure it is, um, they like to say that a lot of the stuff that was in the 90s, especially uh, TV shows such as Friends, Becca, Seidfeld, South Park, were offensive. Um, yeah. And what they're trying to do now is cancel these particular shows or things that happened back then before they were born because it doesn't fit their world now. But it was never a part of their world. It was a part of our world. And basically back then, if you were a person who did not like what you saw on TV, you were told not to watch it. Turn over, whatever. Just don't, just don't watch it. Life was so much better. So I'm gonna start off with the biggest issue that I have in this day and age is cancel culture. Um, I hate it, it should never exist. My views on this is if you don't like it, don't watch it, don't read it, don't have anything to do with it, let the people that want to uh, watch it, read it, whatever, let them go, let, let them go go somewhere else remove yourself from the situation and go live your own little life in your own little bubble basically now what they like to do is they like to bully people into being cancelled um, and you know promote everybody um, in the worst light ever just to try to bring more like-minded people to that situation to bring them down even more 
as long as it's not completely horrible or um, threatening in any way, if it's an opinion and a point of view, and it doesn't mold to yours, walk away. There's a lot of views out there that I don't agree with, but I don't have a sook. I just go, all right, don't believe in that person. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to look at their shit. Like, that's how it works. Like, it's got to, it's got to go both ways. It can't just be uh, one way, and that's it. It's got to go both ways. And another thing, uh, another thing that I can't get used to is people being offended by absolutely everything. I don't understand how people can uh, take something that's a joke and and be completely offended and not have a funny bone on on anything. Like, yeah, fair enough. Like, I'm not someone who gets offended. Like, I want a good laugh and. I gravitate to offensive comedy. I like comedy that makes me laugh and go, ooh, that was <laughs> that was bad, but oh my god. And that's and that's how I operate. It's just turning stereotype stuff that has been there for you know all of ages, just turning it into something funny so we can all have a good laugh. I see no problem with that, but a lot of people do, and I can see why, but you know, life is too short. Life to me, sh it, it, you're not here for, for a long time. Have a fucking laugh. It doesn't mean that you are a horrible person. It just means you want to have a laugh at something that that is a stereotype or or just just a general um, observation. Like, who cares? It doesn't mean that that's your that's the the belief that you're walking around with in the whole of your life. It's just an escape that you can have a laugh at. Like I struggle with this one because I'm from, because I'm from such an um, an old school sort of thinking, where you just say anything, or say the say the stuff that you did back in the day. Like you really got to watch who you talk to now, and and what you say. And you never had to do that back when I was younger. Like you just you just spoke and. It was it was just normal, but now they tear you apart for for everything. I feel like I'm censoring myself all the time, and I just really really hate that. And I'm so lucky that I do have a bunch of friends. I don't have a huge amount of friends, and that's the way I like it. Um, that I can just be myself. We all be ourselves, and we can say whatever the like whatever the hell we want to each other. It doesn't mean what the people of today think it does. It's a totally different meaning that they don't get. And that's sort of what annoys me, is they don't understand that it doesn't mean what they think it means. It means something completely different that's not even a part of their thinking that they think that we think. Does that make sense? <laughs> The biggest thing about being, um, you know, that Gen Y, sort of like that half and half of knowing the old ways of life and the new way of life. I'm not as savvy with my social medias like I should be. Um, I'm quite slack and lazy. So you'll find that um, a lot of my social medias, I try my best. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> But I don't update them, and I'm not on them. Um, my Facebook page, um, I neglect unless I've till I've done a felt pattern, and then I post. I was posting all my videos on there, and I just don't. Uh, Instagram is another one I neglect. I'm trying my best. Um, it it sort of yeah. It <laughs> like I said, I'm trying. I'm trying my best to update as much as I can. Um, I don't even use Twitter. I've got a Twitter account just to have a Twitter account so I can claim it just in case someone decides to steal it. 
Um, not like they would, but anyway. Um, but I don't post on Twitter at all. Not one. I've got no interest in Twitter at all. Now, I do have a TikTok. TikTok is where I have really been focusing a lot of my time on trying to tap into a new market. Uh, um, the TikToks I will take in post on my Facebook Reels. I am active on the Facebook Reels side of thing, but as for my page on Facebook, no, I'm pretty I'm pretty slack. I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be a focus of mine at the moment, unless it is TikTok. Like, I find adulting very hard. Um, I always have. Um, I whinge a lot. Um, I still feel like I'm a 12 year old kid in the brain um, and that I don't really understand life a great deal <laughs> but I'm out here trying and I'm trying to live my best life the best that I can being a responsible adult that sort of still doesn't sit right with me <laughs> I don't know if it ever will but anyway I'm, I have so many more things to whinge about when it comes to being um, someone like me in, in this day and age, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be canceled <laughs> basically. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to cap it off there at the main ones that really, really, really get up under my skin and I'm going to go and I'm going to, um, let you watch the rest of this illustration that I'm drawing, which is basically just a, uh, a puppet, um, being, being um you know mutilated um and told what to do by a mechanical hand and uh there's blood everywhere because this poor little puppet's slowly being pulled apart and disintegrated by um this day and age and the bullshit that it's got to put up with um with you know everything and uh the, the there's blood everywhere there's blood squirting up the um the conveyor belt, the conveyor belt, the, the the belts on the on the system that runs the hand, and it's it's a shit show. In other words, <laughs> that's how I feel about this day and age. It's it's a shit show. Um, I'm I'm living in a shit show, and I wish that it, it would go back to um, you know, I, I, like yeah, I know we have to progress as a as a society. That's fine. Like let's have some old ways come back in with a modern twist that's all i ask that is all i ask <laughs> please anyway i am out of here and i will see you guys in the next one bye